What I'm going to do today is to use the console redirect from a serial port <coughs> to see what happens when we boot a machine. This is a Fujitsu S Primo workstation and how I can use it to diagnose a problem. I'm going to put a wrong RAM module into it. It's this one which will not work and it won't allow the machine to boot. It'll just give beeps as error codes which some people might be used to seeing and by plugging into the serial port <coughs> here a cable connected to this RS-232 to USB converter it's a null modem cable again <coughs> and I'm going to display it on another machine using the Linux terminal program called Screen which is a terminal emulator which will allow me to see what comes out of the serial port console information as the workstation boots. <clears throat> it's currently running as you can see <clears throat> there's some fish swimming around in a tank and it's ready to shut down and then let's have a look to see what happens. So first of all I'm going to start the screen program. The speed 115,200 boards corresponds to the speed set in the BIOS of the workstation. We'll look at that later how we set that up. <clears throat> this is the default speed. So press enter and okay. Interesting. That didn't work. Well, the screen was already running and hadn't terminated properly. So let's try that again. <clears throat> so here is the terminal, hopefully this time ready to start. Okay, that looks better. Flashing cursor. So that's a dumb terminal waiting for serial data to come from this think, no, other workstation. So I'm going to shut it down by doing that. Shut down now and it will shut down. And then the light's gone off, good. What I'm going to do is to power it up and then quickly move back over to the terminal. Oh, there's some information appearing. Look at that. Oh, I have to run setup by pressing Dell. Even though it says press F2 to enter setup, it doesn't actually work. You have to press delete. Only problem was I was too slow and I've missed it. But there you can see the um, console output from the workstation, which is telling me that it's starting up and you can enter the management engine by pressing, pressing Control P. But that message about enter setup by pressing F2 or F12 actually doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this again and be a bit quicker and press delete to run setup. So let's press the power on button. Quickly go to the keyboard pressing the delete key. And now it says entering setup on the terminal. And there we are. <clears throat> this is the dumb terminal on the other machine. On the workstation display, of course, you see the setup screen as you'd expect. But this is also being sent <clears throat> via the console function and the serial port to this dumb terminal running on the second machine. And as you can see, it's uh, terminal based, not very graphical, but it works. And I can actually use the keyboard on this terminal to go through the various settings to change whatever I like. Um, what I'm going to do is find where that console redirect setting is to show you how to set that up. Maybe I have to look for it another time first of all because it's, it's hidden in here somewhere and sometimes it takes a while to find these things. Here we are, serial port console redirection. It's listed under advanced settings. We press enter and there you can see it's enabled and COM1 is a serial port on the back of the workstation. It can also be used for out of band management and Windows emergency management services. I haven't tried that because I don't have Windows on this machine. Um, and then you can go into the settings here and you can change the board rate and so on. I've left it at the default of 115,000 
200. So it all seems to work. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to power down the machine and then I'm going to put in the wrong RAM module, which is an ECC module, error correcting, which means it's got nine chips per bank instead of only eight because there's one extra chip for parity correction for use in servers and also in a Mac Pro, which is where that came from. So I'm going to shut down this machine just by holding the power button until it goes off while it's in its setup mode. I'm going to take the lid off, put in the wrong RAM module, and then see what happens. So here's the workstation computer with the lid off, and this memory module here is the one that's wrong. Um, the manual for this motherboard says that it can take unbuffered memory modules. And what I put in is an unbuffered memory module, but it's ECC, so it's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is power on the machine and then look at the serial console output to see what comes out. So here we go. This is how it was when I left it last. I'm going to power it on and see what messages come up. Press F2 to enter boot. Let's see what happens. Now when I tried this yesterday, I got a fatal error and that was it. Um, oh, <laughs> the machine's starting up, booting as normal. Uh, that's interesting, that was not supposed to happen. Maybe it works now, maybe I'll have a look. Because there are other RAM modules in there, I only had one in one module in there yesterday when I tried. Now I've got four and one of them is wrong, but let's see how much RAM is installed and see what's happened there. When starting the machine with the wrong RAM in it, you get an error, it says severity 2 type 0, there we are, error type 2 severity 0. But then the funny thing is it now actually <clears throat> is quite happy to enter into the BIOS, which it wasn't doing yesterday. Very strange. Oh yes, my favourite. <laughs> um, that's strange, because it didn't want to run at all yesterday with the wrong RAM. Today it seems to run with that severe error message, but it doesn't prevent it from working. So let's see what's happening there. Try something extra. So there I seem to have learned something. It was late last night when it didn't work. Maybe the RAM wasn't seated properly. What I have discovered is you have to put the, um, the <clears throat> ECC modules in the first two positions, the RAM banks one and two, and then the normal un, um, non ECC ones, which were the standard for this machine in, in banks three and four. And then it seems to work quite all right. <clears throat> if we look at the um, BIOS screen, you can see there's two gigabytes of memory in each of the slots. And there were no error messages on boot, no fatal errors. So that's, that's interesting. Just shows how critical it can be in what order you populate the RAM banks <clears throat> on a computer. Also, I noticed that um, to start the setup, program, I said the F2 button didn't work. In fact, on this dumb terminal, you do have to press F2 to enter setup, um, because if you press delete, it's seen as something else. And on the machine itself, on its terminal, you have to press the delete key and not F2 to enter setup. So those are different. There we are. So today we learned something. If you like this video, please remember to hit the like button and please subscribe if you haven't already.